So when exactly is um, Justin Trudeau going to pull Canada's forces out of the U.S.-led coalition bombing ISIS? It's going to be right away when he becomes prime minister, when he's sworn in. Or will uh, the prime minister-elect wait until the expiration date of the mission, the original expiration date, arrives? He's been in touch with the United States President Obama to let uh, the president know of Canada's intention of pulling out of the coalition. Mr. Trudeau says that uh, our soldiers are better suited to training Iraqis on the ground in Iraq. Well, all right, Dr. Zudi Jasser is with us, former U.S. Navy Lieutenant Commander, founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy and author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam, and American Muslim Patriots Fight for His Faith. Dr. Jasser's parents emigrated to the United States from Syria. And uh, Zudi, if I remember correctly, you still have you still have family in Syria, correct? Oh, yeah, other than my immediate family that's here, um, that includes my mom, but all of her family and my dad's extended family and my wife's family, they're all in Damascus and mostly in Aleppo. So uh, they're right at ground zero of this conflict. And we had wanted them to leave uh, years ago, uh, but uh, uh, now it's almost impossible with uh, 10 million refugees. How are, I mean, what is life, if I can just digress for a moment, what is life like on a day-to-day basis for people who are living in Syria, in Damascus, in Aleppo? What's day-to-day life like? Well, the saddest thing is that Syria was not a, you know, uh, it, it wasn't like a, a Congo or Somalia, but it's turning into that. You have now uh, um, so many professionals just living hand in you know, hand to mouth, uh, wondering if they're going to have food, uh, not understanding uh, if there's infrastructure, electricity goes out. Uh, uh, Assad's regime has turned it not only from bombs and and uh, uh, firepower, but uh, they're trying to they stop water at times in order to squeeze people out. They handed them passports uh, in the millions in the past three months because they wanted to shift the demographics. So it is uh, like the the worst horrors in history where wars have beleaguered countries, and it's not a civil war. They're seeing Russian planes dropping bombs. There's hun- there's over 100,000 Iranian soldiers in Syria, so there's a lot of foreign fighters uh, that they see traversing the streets that have really changed their country. Why is it important, or why would it be f- important for Canada to stay in that uh, that coalition that's bombing ISIS? Well, you know, that's amazing. That's the thing is, you know, to hear uh, uh, your, your coming new prime minister say that is amazing because it's really symbolic. I mean, what, what do six CF-18 jets do? I mean, it's a symbolic thing. And, and for a country that is claiming to open its arms and not only claiming, has a plan to bring in tens of thousands of refugees, if you really want to treat the primary cancer, you have to provide safe zones for them in Syria so that they're not displaced. So to say you're going to take refugees but not treat the cancer from where it's starting is sort of bizarre policy. So when you hear that, that, look, we're going to train soldiers on the ground in Iraq, and our mission is not to bomb ISIS, um, we can be more effective on the ground training opposition to ISIS uh, on the ground in Iraq. None of that, just, that just doesn't make sense to you at all. It doesn't. And, and to say, you know, it's interesting, they call it training, and yet Canada lost a soldier, we just lost a soldier, and supposed training operations, which were actually operations that not only were training, but were actually hot conflicts to, to try to stop uh, insurgent uh, uh, ISIS troops into Kurdish areas. So, uh, you know, to, to, to try to split hairs between training versus operations when you have cockroaches of ISIS all over the place that you don't know where they're going to be, and uh, to say that somehow the, the signaling of the removal of our troops, as, as President Obama talked about, we went down to almost zero troops in Iraq two years ago, and now we're back over three, 4,000 because they realized that that vacuum created a huge gap in which ISIS not only filled it in, but Iran and other troops that really want to see Iraq unravel and allowed ISIS to, to usher itself in. So, you know, the policy, and it's also bizarre, you look at the campaigns inside Canada about, with that Trudeau ran, that he wasn't really, it wasn't a primary issue for him, and yet it was one of the first acts he did. And in the conversation that President Obama had with uh, Mr. Trudeau, 
there was a briefing report written by the by the White House about what was discussed during that, and nothing was mentioned about the removal of the jets. And yet, that's a significant affront to to our ally um, to to see them pull planes and not have it discussed in the first phone call between Obama and Trudeau. So this is not being well received, you don't think, by the White House, uh, by uh, well, maybe by Congress, and how's it being received by the U.S. military? Well, the U.S. military more and more is is finding itself uh, alone, and this is supposed to be a coalition of allies who are trying to, uh, a NATO coalition that's already been pressured by Turkey, that's doing odd things uh, against our allies with the Kurds and others. So to see our NATO allies peel away and uh, uh, Canada uh, uh, sort of abandon it, while our own president has signaled 120,000 uh, removal of our own army that's dwindling. He didn't sign our own DOD appropriations bill that he didn't sign. There Actually, he vetoed this week. So uh, our military is becoming more and more, um, you know, abandoned and, and a sense of uh, failure, if you will, which is very sad for me as a former naval officer. So, I mean, what's the future then, um, do you think? as far as the fight in Syria is concerned. I maybe sort of preface that question by, uh, by asking you, how does, the, how does the bombing mission in, in Syria help Syrian people on the ground, like your family? Well, it, it will not help them in, in, until we provide safe zones. And the problem with the safe zone is that we just signed an MOU with Russian airplanes telling them that we would never engage or interfere with what they're doing. So they're bombing the Free Syria Army, they're not bombing ISIS, so it's almost impossible. The New York Times ran a headline two days ago saying that Obama is now reconsidering no-fly zones, and I think that's almost nonsense uh, because he's also signed an MOU with the Russian air. So, the, But the better question is what you just asked is, I think in the long term, eventually, these reluctant warriors, these new BFFs, if you will, uh, Trudeau and Obama, are eventually going to find themselves having to do more because Russia is just uh, uh, the green light's there for them to bomb the good guys. Uh, those on the side of evil are winning. And eventually this humanitarian disaster will spread into Europe, spread all over the planet with ISIS terror that will increase in, in America and in Canada and elsewhere. And they'll realize that we have to do more and we'll be forced to do it whether we want to or not. It certainly changes the dynamic, doesn't it? I mean, because there's a line of thinking as well that goes like this. You've heard it. What are we doing fighting uh, in the Middle East anyway? Why, why, why are we there? What well, we've, we've, you know, we've been there. We've, we've lost troops. Um, maybe it's not a place that we should be fighting to begin with. Well, as you and I have discussed so many times, Roy, it, the bottom line is is when they think our when our president, your prime minister, and others think the only tool is a military tool, you're right. That is not a solution. The solution in Syria should have been. No, we never needed boots on the ground, and now, unfortunately, that's the only way to get rid of ISIS is having boots in some ways. But the only solution is a doctrine that advances liberty, that bonds with the grassroots Arab awakening movements that are trying to shed two dictatorships, the secular dictators of Assad, Saddam, and others, and the Islamist theocrats. And until we have a long-term strategy where the West starts to decide, just like in the Cold War, we decided the Soviets were the problem, and this is the problem with the current Obama's Trudeau mindset, which is sort of withdrawal, no plan. We just sort of get back on the golf course, talk about marijuana and other things, and nothing else matters. That conflict in the Middle East will continue to spread with Russia bolstering and pushing evil more and more to spread terror until we are forced to do something on it. When if we had done it earlier, it would have been a much smaller operation and mission. It looks to me like uh, Putin is the uh, is the leader in charge and he just doesn't he's not afraid of any of them and they just keep stepping back from him seeing uh, knowing that a, a russian general walked into the united states embassy in in iraq and uh, said in an hour we start the bombing so get out of our way and essentially the u.s air force did that that tells me all i need to know unfortunately zudi oh it's so true and and this sort of repackaging the washington post has a great editorial today about why we should be shutting down RT, the media propaganda arm of the Russians, because of all of its violation uh, that was laid down by The Hague for the last 10, 20 years. And yet we continue to let them to operate to the tune of a half a billion dollars to change the narrative to Russian television in the West 
about what's actually happening. And unfortunately, we're not pushing what the narrative really is, and we're letting the propagandists from Russia, Assad, and the Middle East to continue to radicalize Muslims and to make the narrative be that somehow Putin is a great leader when in fact he's the head of a mafia that's continuing to try to rebuild the Soviet empire. Dr. Jasser, thank you for the time. Always appreciate it. Anytime. Thanks, Roy. Thanks, Zudi. Dr. Zudi Jasser, founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. He's the author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam and American Muslim Patriots Fight.